sure how I'm doing that. Where you cut the notes real short with your picking hand. Put the pick right back up against the string. How am I doing that? 
I literally can't even tell how I'm doing it. I think I'm muting it with my thumb. Great lesson, huh? Can't even explain what I'm doing. Uh, maybe you guys know, know how, what I'm doing. I can't tell. Anyway, hi. It's just Larry. It's, it's a Wednesday or Thursday. What is it, Thursday? Yeah, Thursday. There's a game on tonight. Oh, by the way, dig this pedal. Check it out. Sweet Robert Keeley sent this new Blues Disorder. That's what you were just hearing. Blues Disorder. Here's without it. Here's with it. Sorry, sorry. Here's with it. That was nice. You know, today I'm... I'm feeling like it's Thanksgiving in the middle of uh, December. Uh, I don't know why. I just had this. I'm not trying to get all corporate up with people, but I, I just had this great feeling of thanks today for. Like today started out with a when I check. You know, you, you, you get up. First thing you do is look at your phone. The bad news event, just to see what happened. Hopefully nobody died. You know, you know that whole thing. And I got this voice message from Kenny Aronoff. You know, who, who leaves me a lot of messages. And I got, it was the most, the sweetest, most uplifting message I ever got. I just love that guy. If you're ever wondering about what kind of person Kenny Aronoff is, let me tell you straight up. He is the coolest, nicest guy on planet Earth. I mean, he's got the soul of a child most beautiful, innocent, loving, sweetheart. Kenny Aronoff, I love you, man. I always have. I've known you for damn near 25 years now. I uh, appreciate the fact that you watch these silly videos and all the sweet things you say. Me and you, bro. Bros to the end. Okay. Uh, episode 264 here. Uh, I'm also very thankful. We, the boys... Uh, we had a beautiful morning. You know, we watched a YouTube video about the worst ghettos in the world. I mean, in, in these countries where people are just so destitute and the living conditions are so bad. The boys just stood there watching the screen like this. They were just like. And I looked at them after we watched it and I said, see, boys, it ain't so bad here. Nashville, Tennessee, is it? And they were like, no. Um, sometimes, not to compare, but I'm just saying, sometimes watching stuff that puts a little perspective on your life is not a bad thing. You know, um, watch the conditions that some people have to live in in this world, and you think, man, you know, I'm not so bad off after all. Maybe my yard doesn't look so bad as I thought it did. You know, it, it's we're spoiled in America, man. We got we got a lot of great shit going on, and uh, I think sometimes we overlook it, and we think, you know, boy, I sure like to be living in some other country or whatever. You know, I mean, you know, yeah, great, great, but boy, it ain't so bad here, is it? Lord Jesus. So yeah, just a little perspective, you know. Zoom out a little bit and think about how good we all got, and uh, and just think. Uh, you know, life is okay. Life is precious. And um, thank you for Robert Keeley. He's another beautiful sweetheart guy. I got, you know, thankful day. Sorry. I know you guys hate it when I get all sappy and sentimental. It's pitiful. Grown ass man acting like that. Uh, let's get into some BCB. Oh, you know, Silvio is out there again. You know, he's like, he's like, uh, he's like Ted Bundy lurking in the, in the, comment column with his tan VW uh, but he's got a new name now Vintage Pipes Nightmare boy that's pretty good it fits him uh, you know we, as you guys know we patched it up over the years but he's getting weird again I think he's back off his meds you know he's not nearly as that asshole teddy boy not nearly as bad as that I gotta say teddy boy is the biggest asshole that has ever come along on the, on the homeschooling channel. There's another guy, too. 
Uh, Emily Matz is his name. I had to block him from my channel, but he's on he's on uh, old buddy Jolly's channel talking shit about how Larry's a Satanist. I'm a Satanist. Isn't that what you were just thinking? Because I went to the Bohemian Grove. People don't understand anything about the Bohemian Grove and how it really works. They just believe all that shit that they, they read on the internet because they're little sheep, sheep people. This is a great book. Uh, my son, Marshall, who loves guitar, has been reading this, and it warms my cockles of my heart to see him pouring through this book and saying things like this. He'll say, Dad. He said, Dad, look at this strat. He loves this strat. Let me find it here. Let me find this strat. And I gotta say, I love it too. You know, I love a nice custom color fender. He loves this strat right here. Who could blame him? Seafoam Green 64. You know, people forget that these guitars actually exist. These custom color fenders are so rare and so, uh, they're, they're the stuff of legend. People forget that they actually exist. There are rich people out there who have those guitars in their collection. Yes, there is a guy who's got a clay dot 64 mint guard shoreline gold strat in his collection. They did make them. They also made bound neck strats in 65 and 66. No one's ever seen one in the wild, but they do exist. Old Larry actually owned one many, many years ago, but it was a basket case, but it was real. Bound neck strat. Trying to find a bound neck strat in this world would be like as rare as, uh, I can't make jokes. I, some of my jokes, I have to stop them right when they're about to come out. My brain just goes a million miles an hour. I gotta, be, you know, I gotta keep the family show go, going here. I can't get too, you know, funny. Can't, can't get too, uh, get, get too, you know, edgy. Edgy is the word we're looking for. Um, let's see. Uh, you know what I'm really excited about? I'll tell you what I'm really excited about. You know, in the, on, on, the left, on December 31st, uh, the Colts are playing the Raiders at Lucas Oil Stadium. And uh, guess who is taking his two sons to that game and is going to sit up in the press box with the boss man, maybe get down the field before the game with his sweet young boys that love football. I'm so excited. The the kindness of the Colts organization to, to, to let us redneck hillbillies come to one of their games and sit in the box and enjoy, maybe have a little finger food. You know how they, they put out the nice charcuteries and things? There'll probably be some little hand sausages. That'd be nice. Maybe the boys will have a, a nice Sprite out of the little corporate fridge that'd be great you know um man this guitar is something special 63 bird light as a feather uh it's got a flintstones neck it feels like the exact neck that fred flintstone would play when he got out of his car with the rock wheels he would grab this guitar and plug it into his flintstones amp i wonder what the flintstones would use for an amp hmm. I picture Fred playing through a uh, high watt for some reason. Like an old high watt would be pretty cool for Fred Flintstone. Barney would use, Barney's totally like a tweed fender guy. I could totally see him playing that. Um, okay, a couple questions in the VCB here. Um, uh, one guy said, uh, hey, what is the best guitar you've ever owned? That's a cool question. Burst, the burst, of course. See, the thing about the burst that 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 is funny, it's like, I tried to hate that guitar. When that guitar came into my life, I knew I could never own it, I'd never afford it, and I wanted to hate it. 
I didn't want to admit that it was that much better than all my other guitars because I knew I could never afford it or buy it. And the guy that let me kindly borrow it all that time w w was just trying to prove a point to me. Don't be talking shit on bursts when you never had one. Basically what he was trying to say. And he was right. And, and every time I took it to a session, it killed every other guitar I had. And then I would try, I would find, this is going to kick that burst ass. I'd bring home other guitars. And sure enough, man, that thing would just eat them all for lunch. And then I started thinking, okay, maybe I should sell everything I own and buy that guitar. Maybe I should start saving money to try to get that thing. That's how I know it's great, because I didn't want to like it. I didn't buy that and hope it was going to be a great guitar. That thing forced me to love it. That's how good it is. And, uh, every, you know, it's not the prettiest burst in the world. There's a lot of, a lot of uh, bursts out there with way more flame and more exciting burl to the, to the, to the, to the book matched, flitch matched top. See, there's a lot of great terms in this book. Uh, this book is great. Beauty of the Burst book. My guitar is not in here. Uh, but there's great terms in here. Flitch matched. Look that one up. Uh, there's a great page in here called The Voice of the Burst where they go off into great detail about the harmonic overtone order of the PAF pickups. For those real geeks out there, this is a pretty cool book made in 1996. I like guitar books. Um, so yeah, the Burst is definitely the best guitar I've ever had. And then another guy said, what are the best guitars you've ever played that you don't own? Mm -hmm. See, it's sort of a, a, an offshoot question in the same family. I can tell you right now, three guitars come to mind. Three. I did three. That's what I just did. Uh, Dan Arbach's Telly is the best Telly on, on planet Earth, hands down. Uh, there's no Telly that could touch that guitar. It's the best telly in the world. And I, will, I would go to my grave saying that there is no telly that could touch that guitar. Uh, Jim Baggett in Lawrence, Mass. Lawrence, at Mass Street Music in Lawrence is a beautiful guy and a collector of uh, old Martins. He has a 38 D18 that is without question the best acoustic guitar I've ever touched. It is out of this world as loud as a piano and the most expressive instrument I have ever, acoustic instrument I've ever played. Of course, he'll never sell it and he shouldn't because it's the best guitar in the world. 35 to 38 is the magic for Martins. I don't know what the fuck was going on in there, but it's like aliens built those guitars. Uh, and the other third guitar is Elliot Michael who owns Rumble Seat. He has a black triple pickup. I believe it's a 57 or 58 Les Paul Custom. And I don't normally go for those guitars. The third pickup kind of bothers me, and I'm not a huge, you know, fan of those. I think they're very cool looking, but I've never, I've owned a bunch of them over the years, but I've never kept one. But he's got one that has a broken headstock, and uh, it is the best one I've ever played. It is so magical. The bridge pickup is just instant records and and it plays and sounds amazing and it's lightweight and it's just it sounds like records absolutely sounds like records and uh of course he'll never sell that and he shouldn't but those are the three best guitars i've ever played that i don't own well, you know it's sort of a, uh, it's fun to play those guitars but it also puts perspective on you know you think you know well man you know I think we're just lucky in this life to ever find one special instrument. If we can ever find one guitar that moves us like that, consider it luck. Because, you, first of all, you were lucky it was ever available for sale. Secondly, you're lucky you were able to afford it. Um, and Don't think of yourself as the owner. Just think of yourself as the, as the custodian of that instrument until your death. That's what I do. Nobody owns anything. Uh, we are all just holding, we're renting these instruments for our lifetimes. 
so that they can be passed on to other people. But we pay to have it rented for our lives. So there you go. Uh, okay, uh, maybe I'll post a link to that ghetto video just to give you a little perspective on, uh, on uh, how good we got it over here. Okay, all right, friends. Hope you have a great day. Zoom out. Appreciate what you got in this life. Get your ass pipe checked. All right, see you.